Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Peace Park. As you see, I just returned from work, ready to go to bed. Having a cup of tea. And enjoying a final pipe. And today I had a little conversation with St. David Pipes. We were talking about YouTube, YouTube guidelines, blocking, banning of users. And this kept me thinking. Because something about this doesn't feel right at all. The methods used, but we know if you get a strike or if you get blocked on YouTube, they don't tell you why. What was the comment that caused the ban? What did you say that was wrong? Which what was against their community guidelines? And of course, you keep changing these guidelines all the way, all the time. So you never know. On the other side, there are channels that get away with everything. I wonder why this is. But something I've learned here in the community, from the community, is to see the bigger picture. It's not just YouTube, it's our Western society as a whole. And I do not say that we're living in a tyranny, we still have lots of freedoms other people in this world do not have. But we are heading in a certain direction. There are several signs, warning signs, kept me thinking that something we are heading in the wrong direction as a whole just to make it short <clears throat> why do I think so? well do you know Alexander Solzhenitsyn the Russian author I don't know his exact ethnic background but he lived in the Soviet Union prosecuted because his work. He earned a Nobel Prize. He wrote the book The Archipelago Gulag, which describes the everyday life in the Stalinistic Soviet Union, and it's absolutely not funny. And I don't know if he said it in this book, he wrote it in this book, or he said it himself. He said, you can recognize it, communist dictatorship or any dictatorship by the way it treats its citizens when ordinary real criminals get away free with what they do and the citizens are treated like criminals this is one of the big signs of a dictatorship and this is something we already have in our society. It becomes quite obvious and more so with each passing day, with every passing day. Crime rates rising all the time. The police is more busy to cover this all up. But nowadays, even normal people that don't educate themselves come to know this, come to feel this on their own and it becomes more and more difficult to hide the fact and when you see a girl was raped there were some pedophiles caught and on and on and they get minimal sentences if at all usually they got away scot-free and just don't do this again 
it's absolutely hilarious. And in comparison, if you say a few wrong words here and there, you feel the full force of the law. For saying the wrong things in the wrong place, you get harsher sentences. For raping a young girl, for example. I'm sorry, too much talking, the pipe does burn as well. So here we have one big sign of a dictatorship. Another sign is that this brings me back to YouTube, that they keep the rules unclear. They do change it all the time. It is unclear what is allowed to say, what is not allowed to say. Sometimes people get prosecuted for doing something. Um, sometimes they don't. This was also a sign, uh, this was also the case under Stalinism in the Soviet Union. You, some people always spoke their mind about what is going wrong and nothing happened at all. And a lot of other people kept silent, tried to do everything right. They got arrested, they were sent to a labor or death camp in Siberia and never even know why. And as I said, YouTube doesn't tell you what to do when you get a strike. In the Soviet Union, you got arrested and you didn't know what for. And the policeman asked you what you have done wrong. Okay, people then said, you have done nothing wrong. And then they were incarcerated, they were tortured until they came up with something, they confessed something. Of course, we are far away from this, but the methods remain the same, keep everything unclear. Be unclear about the rules, be unclear about the consequences, change the rules. So people should be aware of this. Some sick minds came up with these methods. This is not natural, this is planned. Yeah, another sign is that at least where I live, we had always several parties, political parties. Every party had a slightly different point of view, there were discussions, and in the end they had to get along with something. Nowadays, you have only two allowed opinions, wrong and right. There is nothing in between anymore. Most of the parties are indistinguishable, they all want to do the same. And then there's one opposition party, which you can trust or cannot trust, it's up to you. Very strange. And I have the impression that politicians in Europe, from the European Union, they want to turn the whole Europe into a copy of China. They take the worst parts of communism and the worst parts of capitalism, mix them together, and this shall be the future for us here. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but as I said, there are signs that do point in this direction. Another thing is that governments makes rules and regulations, more rules, more regulations every day. And you have so many regulations that it's possible to follow the rules and live by the rules. It just doesn't work out. So for example, if you want to run a small business here in Europe, it's almost impossible. You have so many things to consider. It just doesn't work. So the best thing is you do what you want and don't care about the law at all and you get the best results. If you try to follow everything, you will be bankrupt after one or two years, and that's it. Another example where I live. Bicyclists are allowed to drive on the road now next to each other. So far they had to drive in line, now they can drive next to each other. So far so good or bad. But when you drive a car and do want, you want to pass them by, 
you have to be two meters apart from them. So if they are driving next to each other, it's impossible to be two meters apart. And in the city, roads, you don't have the place to be two meters apart when you drive past them. And also, the more rules and regulations, they try to harass gun owners. If you legally own a gun, they make more rules, more regulations, tiny bits and pieces here and there. So in the end, you fail somewhere to do what the law says, and then they have a reason to grab the guns from you. Also, why do the governments want to keep the people unarmed? It's a sign for a free, free man to bear arms and to defend his property and his family. For me, that's a basic human right. And on the other hand, where I live, the police is now carrying assault rifles in their cars at least. If everything is fine and safe, why do they have to carry assault rifles? And I'm not allowed to have a gun. So far to my thoughts today, you might keep thinking of it. Most of my viewers are at least 10 years older than me. Think back in time, did you have more freedoms back then? I mean in the Western world, I know other parts of this world that are quite different. Or when you talk to the older guys, what they have done in their youth, there were things completely unimaginable to do today. It's just not possible anymore so far to our freedoms. So yeah, that's my rambling for today. Before I go to bed, have a nice evening, have a nice day, whatever. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.